Team Sandman, we're a rookie, rookie team, and we've only done like a, you know, one of the tutorials, so we've only used the blocks for very long. You guys can just keep going this way. Oh, oh my name is Deb. Um, we're, we're team one six five zero two, and we're like the rookie level. Okay. So have you guys done any programming before? Um, we're not a part of the programming team, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, okay, that's all right.
it takes longer to upload your code to the robot, but it's good to use if you're trying to work collaboratively and want to use GitHub. So this is what Onbot Java looks like. It's an online IDE, and this is the format of it. So you have all your files where you write your code. This is where you can see errors and output, and then this is the filter. So the first step is to go to the program and manage um, tab on your robot, uh, so on the robot phone. So I'm assuming if you guys have used block programming, it's the same thing. You go to this tab and then connect to the network. So all of you are comfortable with doing this on your phones, right? So just stop us if you have any questions on any of the slides that we go over. So once you're connected and you go to the IP address, um, you can select um, some sample programs to work off of. So we have basic sensor and pushbot and these are each sample program is for a different purpose so if you have um, a sensor on your robot and you would like to make a program for that there are some sample programs already given by FTC and you can look at that to help you make your programs there's also concept and hardware so we use hardware a lot to um, for specific tools on our robot so that's making basically a class does everyone know what a class is Raise your hand if you don't know what a class is. I'll put that in Java. <laughs> okay, yeah. so basically a class is something that you create that can store its own variables, and you can create methods that work with that class. So when you create an instance of that class called an object, you can refer to those variables that you store and use those methods. So it's really a good way to organize your code, especially if you have a lot of different tools, and you can group things based off the category, like motors or servos or different So this is um, a part of the screen that Kushi showed you earlier. So, so the first thing you want to do is click the plus button to create a new program, and be, this pop-up window will show up. And you want to name your program and make sure it's something um, appropriate that you could be able to look at later and know exactly what program that is. And the location should always be in team code, so you don't really have to change that. And next is. The sample programs that we were just talking about, you can choose a different type based on what you want that program to be. And then you have to choose autonomous or telia. And then this is what it will look like. So once again, your like, programs will show up here, and you can click on them, and they'll show up in that window over there. One question, how do you get this software, like on board? Do you download this thing, or do you? No, so, um, do you want to go back? So on your phone, you'll have the program and manage tab open, and then you connect to this wireless network. Go wait, go back. <laughs> connect to that wireless network, and the password is up there as well, and then you go to this address right here on your laptop, or any device, yeah. So, yeah, once you're on there, it will take you to this. Yes, and so, Okay, now we'll go over a sample program that is for just a robot with two DC motors. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have everything imported. So these are some of the libraries that you're going to be using, like DC motor is for the uh, motors on your robot, and then elapsed time is to keep track of the time, which is often really useful and autonomous. Um, so make sure that you have everything imported that you need, otherwise you'll get errors because Um, so the first thing that you need is a tag. So this one has teleop, and here on the phone you'll see two different arrows um, in the middle of the screen. I don't know if you guys can see it, but here. Um, so depending on the tag, it'll show up in a different place, and then you can give it a name um, so you can find it when you're trying to select the correct program to run. And then make sure that when you initiate the class that you have the correct name, which is the same name that you need. Um, these are three variables that you'll that we use in this uh, program. So elapsed time is the timer, and then left drive and right drive are the two motors that we use in the configuration. So, so um, at the beginning, there's this method called run off mode. So as soon as you hit the uh, this button right here, it says INT on it for initialize. Um, it will start with this line which says telemetry. 
dot add update status initialized. So basically tele telemetry is what shows up at the bottom of your screen when your um, robot is running. So right now it says status robot is stopped, but once you click initialize, it will say status initialized. Um, um, so here is where we uh, instantiate the left and right drive objects. So you have to use the configuration name that we had before when you're configuring the robot in order for the, um, the program to know where in the, which port it's located at. And next, you set the direction. So both motors are turning in the same direction, but if they're put oppositely on the robot, then one needs to go reverse. So that's why we have a reverse right here. And then we're just waiting for start, which is waiting for um, you to press this play button. And then, the next slide. This loop right here, while off mode is active, is what's running when you press the play button. So in here, we have two variables that will be holding the power for each motor. And we're changing the power based on these two joysticks on the gamepad. So if you see here, gamepad one dot left stick Y, that means the left stick and the Y movement for this left stick. So based on that, that's um, the robot will move forward and backwards. And we also have turn, which is on the right stick. And these values are clipped, if you can see range.clip, to be between negative one and one, because the power that the motor sets you can only be between those values. So as shown here, you, can, you set the power based off the variables on the last screen, and those can only be from negative one to one for PC motors. And then for servos, you set the position, which also has to be between, uh, which has to be between zero and one. And then here, uh, you can add data to your telemetry in order to debug very useful if you're trying to see what different values are at that time in your code. And um, you have to make sure to update them to make sure that they actually get pushed to the And then the last thing that you need to do in order to push your code to your robot is to press this build button. So once you do that, if you have any errors in your code, they'll show up here and then you can go back and fix them. But once you press build, it should go to your robot and you can run it. It is really useful when you're trying to make small changes because you don't have to keep on plugging your robot and then plug it into your computer and then upload your code like you have to do in Android Studio. Does anyone have any questions <coughs> on what we just covered? Okay. So now if you have a laptop, uh, you can connect to this uh, Wi-Fi network and this is the password and let us know if you can't see it. I don't know. Yeah, I can read it. Yeah.